Kia ora koutou, Atama, uh, Atamaria, oh that's good morning. Poor Maria, everyone. <laughs> Come in, welcome. Talofa lava, maloa lele, kia ora na bulavanaka, no mai haere mai ki te kura a koutoutuka. Welcome, 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 no mai haere mai. I'm pretty excited to be here tonight, to see you all here. Um, numbers are down because of COVID. We've had an out, out, um, outburst in the city and a couple of secondary schools have closed down just today. Um, and so it is quite quiet tonight, but we've got loads on live stream. Hello, people on live stream. Really, really happy to um, have you with us tonight. And so we're doing a little bit of a hybrid model tonight. Um, so welcome to all of you. Um, ko ramaroa te maunga, ko mangakahi te awa, uh, nō taitokaraua hau, ko Naomi Ingram taku ingwa. So my name is Naomi Ingram, um, and I am the Associate Dean of Initial Teacher Education. So, and it is an honour and privilege to work for the College of Education. I'm really proud of our institution, our university. I'm really proud of the staff that work with me, and I'm really proud of our graduates and our programmes. The graduates, um, we don't need to sell our program because our graduates sell it for us every day in the classroom and in the early childhood centre. And you're going to meet some of our near graduates tonight and um, I think you'll all agree, I already know they're special. So, it was very exciting actually. I just went down to, I've just come back from the mighty Balclutha. Anyone from Balclutha here? Oh, you're missing out. So I was there today. And I walked into that staff room and there was like heaps of, there was a kid I taught when he was in, um, well, fourth form back in the day, that's how old he is. And then there was, yeah, I know, that's how old I am. <laughs> and so I taught him in year 10 and now he's a teacher there and there was like 10 other people that have come through the program in recent years and it's pretty special. So um, we are all here tonight because you are interested in the noble profession of teaching. And um, I'm happy to say that I am too part of that. So all of your lecturers that um, you'll meet tonight and all the lecturers in the program, we're all registered teachers. So we chose, like you, at some stage in our career to come teaching. And it is something that we will do and we'll hold our registration near to our heart as like an identity thing. I am a teacher. Hear me roar. Sometimes you can really hear me roar. Um, so it is quite a um, privilege and an honour to be a teacher and you get more out of it than you ever give. It is a wonderful, wonderful profession. So we'll tell you a little bit about that tonight. But first, let's start with a karakia. And just because I like to mix things up, we're all going to stand, so me too. <clears throat> so let's, let's talk about, um, this is quite a common one, but let's talk about what it means first. And I'm going to do some actions, and you're welcome to join in. I promise you I won't judge you, okay? And it's, it's, um, it's exciting. All right, so it goes, peace be everywhere. Let the oceans for your journey be calm and glistening like greenstone. The shimmering light across the water will guide your journey. Oh, it's good to be alive. And so when it talks about um, uh, the shimmering light, it means that it's about making good decisions. So we all think that you should make a good decision about um, teaching in the future. So we're going to do that together now. Obviously, you already know the actions off by heart. Um, so we're going to have a go. So kia hora te marino, kia whakapapa paunamu te moana, kia tere te kārohirohi e mua e tōhuarahi tihei mauri ora. Ka pai. E noho. Kia ora, everyone. So tonight we're going to talk about why we think that... Um, we're going to sell you a little bit about the teaching and the programs. We'll talk a little bit more about the programs and give you some information about applying. Um, you'll have an opportunity to ask questions at the end, and you can ask general questions in front of the group, and then you can also talk to the individual program coordinators as well to ask individual questions. If you're on live stream, you can send a message through the Facebook uh, page. There's a messenger function there and you can send a message to, to that page. Okay, it's going to press play now and I'm going to wait patiently for the play sign to come up, Sonia. Yeah? Or do I touch it? The mouse. 
I'm wiggling the mouse. Yeah. Okay. Oh, oh. It's like every day is just a bit better. I chose Otago because it's nice and close to home. I can still I, pop. I'm that for you. Thank you. No. Cool. Would you be able to look after it for a wee minute? Yeah. I've just got to do this video and then I'll be able to come find it with you. Uh, kia ora, uh, my name is Kane Johnson. My name is Erica Cormack. Taro Falava, um, my name is Sammy Seel. Hi, I'm Alicia de Corsi. I am a third year student doing the um, Bachelor of Teaching in Dawson Primary Education. I think the really great thing about the College of Education is the fact that the lecturers are always available for you, so you can go and ask for help or guidance or just anything really, and I think that's what makes the College of Education really special. The Tapoko unit is an opportunity for anybody to be part of. Uh, whether you're Tauiwi, you're Māori or Pacifica, it doesn't matter. It's not just about speaking Māori, it's about the concepts and ideals behind it and giving you a better, a better world view, I guess, of, of Aotearoa Māori and um, how we can incorporate that and it's something to be celebrated and not afraid of. The Early Childhood Programme involves a bit of class time which is lectures, tutorials and workshops. You do that usually about four days a week. Then you get put in an early childhood centre. And yeah, that's sort of when you get to put into practice everything you've learned in class. Oh, good work. Placement's been awesome. Um, I find that I've been learning a lot more very quickly in my time here. And also it's been good pairing up with teachers, with mental teachers, to help us who are quite young in the profession, quite fresh, to be able to practice and develop our pedagogies too. Once you get into the school and you're in the class environment, you really realise why you're doing the degree. The kids absolutely love having student teachers and it gives you a chance to experience life. As a teacher, you see how busy it is, but also how amazing it is, especially when you see students make progress or you realise that you have a really cool impact on their life. I can't speak highly enough of uh, the lecturers and the support that we get. And also from the students that you're, uh, you're working alongside as well. Yeah, yeah, we'll go with one of that and then give you uh, building that sense of whānau and getting each other through. In terms of the lecturers, they are very helpful, very informative, very knowledgeable people. And it's awesome to know that if we are struggling, that we are able to approach them on a more pastoral conversation that's very comforting and very reassuring for a student who's not from here. There wasn't ever really another option for me. I always wanted to come to Otago. With the OUSA, at their events and things like that brings you into the whole Dunedin experience, I think. And on your map? Yeah, I did. Oh, I can see. You did it there and there. Yeah, that's a lot of bees. Is it? Just like a physics oh, classroom. Thank you. So, one of the things that's really special about the College of Education, you've all had different, um, some of you actually may just still be at school and thinking about this in the future, but many of you have already been through university and done an undergraduate degree. Um, we find um, a lot of the departments you come from are really, really supportive, but that is probably a main um, feature of our College of Education. So we've got a really um, structured pastoral care system, and it's a whānau. We get to know you really well. We know all of your names. Um, we follow up on you. We go, hey, haven't heard you from, from you in a while. We're, we're watching. <laughs> and, and, and it really is, um, we, we guide you in your journey, and we really care about you and know you as people. Um, so the other thing is there's lots of placement time in early childhood settings and schools, so you're in and out um, all year. Um, heaps of fun. Uh, so a lot of people in uni, not my daughter Alicia, say, I don't want to go to class today, um, but that's not the same here. And um, great career preparation. So um, Natalie, one of the graduates from the 2020, uh, this is 2020, she was biology, science, 
Um, University of Otago offers many opportunities to ensure you're ready to begin your teaching career. The degree has been well planned and offers a little bit of everything. So we actually um, foster your career as well. So we help you plan your CV and uh, help you get into the job market and things like that. So it really is a, a wrap around care. Um, and I'll ask Michael to sp speak in a minute. I just want to say that uh, we offer particular and specific pastoral care for Māori Pacifica students um, and with our kaiafina Māori and Pacifica. So Michael is here. <laughs> I was like, Michael is here and out of the, gene, out of the genie out of the box and he'll tell you a little bit about the kaiafina program. Works. Yep. Tanui to me, kia koutou katoa. Um, great to see everybody here. Um, so the Kaifin program is just one of those many layers that are in the college to keep an eye on people uh, and see that you're doing okay. Um, especially for the masters, uh, actually it's Amy Curtis who takes that role from across the masters program, um, where you start at the beginning of January and you're right there till the end of December. And it is uh, a big race. And compared to uh, potentially the, the undergrad, um, it's like you're doing a whole year and a half in one year. Um, so there's a lot of pressure, and we like to um, make sure that everybody um, who signed up can get through to the other end. Um, and that's our challenge as all, all the staff uh, to look after people. But the Kaiafina program is put in just to keep an extra eye on uh, those who are Māori or Pacifica. Um, as, a, as one of those layers. Uh, yeah, I think that's, that, that, that covers it. Um, so, yeah, come on board and we'll make sure you get to the end. That's, that's, that's uh, our aspiration. Hi. Kia ora, Michael. But all students in the programme, we, we really do have a wraparound care programme. Um, and as Michael said, the programme starts in um, about January the 16th or so, but middle of January, and um, goes to about the middle of December. So it is a, a long programme. In terms of the university year, it's like the university year plus a summer school at either end. Does that make sense? Because you're doing 180 points in one year, so it's six 30-point papers. Okay. So um, it is a postgraduate, so not even a graduate, or it's a postgraduate initial teacher education qualification, and you can get it in early childhood, primary and secondary education. Uh, our Bachelor of Teaching programs you can do in Dunedin and in Vicargal, but in the Master of Teaching we only offer it in Dunedin. Um, as I said, six compulsory papers. They're, they're broken into three parts, so you've got curriculum, a couple of curriculum papers, a couple of... Um, around professional experience or researching your professional experience and researching students learning within professional experience and then um, the more the educational theory papers around diversity and inclusion and theories of learning so it's sort of broken into three parts um, you have to have so teaching council requirement you might have heard the news about teaching council in the last couple of days i'll let you look that up yourselves but the um you have to have spent at least 80 days in the program within an early childhood setting or in a school um, really excellent employment outcomes so um, i can particularly talk about um, the secondary program for example um, that is um, we've basically had um, up till COVID, we had a 100% employment rate. With COVID, things have been a little bit differently, but it's, 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 it's um, very, very high in the 90% of employment. So, and, and it will be similar like that for the other ones as well. I just happen to know about secondary. So, as I said, we offer early childhood, primary and secondary, and we have the wonderful Sonia Gacious, who's going to come and talk to you about the early childhood option in the MTeach. Lava Lava, Kiora Tanakoto Katoa. Um, I am Sonia Gishis. I'm not from around here originally. You can probably tell that. I'm originally from the States, uh, grew up in eastern Kansas, and then spent 30 years teaching little people. Well, yeah, um, and teacher education in, in Arizona, where it was like the opposite of here weather wise. Anyways, um, yeah, so our wonderful early childhood education program, we were the last of the, of the sectors to join the Master's Teaching and Learning Program. We are the smallest. Um, 
as you're going to hear over and over tonight how um, this program has relationships, and relationships are so important. Um, in early childhood, everything starts with, with relationships, but in teaching, everything starts with relationships too. So we really embody that. Um, I really like the idea that we're, we're really, we're not watching you like creepy wise. <laughs> we're watching because it is part of that relationship of money to really make sure that you do well and that you are totally prepared to go out and work with our, our tamariki. So this is early childhood teaching. It may look like just sitting on a sandbox having fun with little wee people, which a lot of it is that's very true. But uh, there's a lot of learning that's going on there. Um, in Aotearoa, New Zealand, we focus on children's learning dispositions and the working theories they have about the world and extending and expanding all of those. So in this picture, um, you'll see our Kayako sitting there with these children who are probably developing some dispositions around courage, taking that courageous leap into that sandbox and exploring the textures and the sand that can oftentimes go flying. Um, and working um, with them on uh, collaborating, filling that pail together, learning alongside with, the, with others. Um, and it's always real good to point out there's lots of maths happening there, filling up the, that bucket, counting how many shovelfuls it's going to take to fill that bucket. Really exciting stuff. Mm? It's exciting. It, very exciting. Physics, chemistry, mm. dry sand, wet sand. How does it flow? Does it flow up? What throws better? Wet sand, dry sand. So all this kind of learning is happening, and the Kayako is there guiding that, asking beautiful open-ended questions. Mm, how did that happen? What I wonder what would happen if, and just really facilitating and expanding the children's learning. So that's a lot of what you see um, in early childhood. We do lots of planning. People don't think we do, but we do. We look at children's learning. We assess what's happening there, but looking for those learning dispositions, looking for their working theories writing a little story about what we noticed that day, kind of um, deconstructing and finding meaning in that learning, finding what we think is happening there, and then figuring out what we can do the next day or in five minutes to extend and expand that. So it's very active, very engaging, um, and I'll be honest, there's probably nothing better than a good cuddle from one of those little cherubs along the way too. All right, so it is a one-year program, as we've mentioned only offered here in Dunedin. It qualifies you to teach zero to five, six, mostly five, because they tend to go to school after that. Um, in kindergartens, child care centers, and any other early childhood type settings, such as home-based care, um, play centers, other places. Um, yeah, I'm the program coordinator, and I don't think that's all I think about all of this year. So, kia ora. Kia ora, Sonia. Because, Andrea Robertson, you're up next to talk about primary education. Hello, Falava, kia ora. Um, Andrea Robertson, toku ingoa. It's lovely to have you all here today. And I am the primary program coordinator for the Bachelor of Teaching and Masters. So um, we probably don't want to do a show of hands, but you could just do a little. Who is here thinking about primary? Oh yeah, a few yeah, nods. A few nods. Oh, I was just yeah. interested to see. Welcome, welcome. Hey, welcome to the best job in the world. And this goes for secondary and early childhood as well. Um, I'm biased. I've been a teacher for 25 years and it is just a whole lot of fun. Um, it, you will have days where you are just, you know, finding it so rewarding. You'll have days where you're finding it really challenging. There will be laughter. There will be tears seriously, but there'll also be a whole lot of laughter because working with children, with young um, teenagers, with students, you just never quite know what's going to happen. Every day is different. Um, for me, one of the highlights of being a teacher is the relationships, the connections that you make with your um, students. And I love, you know, if I'm up the street or at a um, work do, and uh, actually just last year I was at a work do with my husband and I got this tap on my shoulder and a, are you listening? And I looked around <laughs> and up and there's this big tall man um, and I taught him when he was about six or seven. And he and I, I used, my call for the class was, are you listening? And so, you know, and he then, <laughs> To, he said, I loved you, I loved being in your class. I remember all the singing, I remember the puppet, it was called Mr. Wuzzle. Um, you know, and he just, he just went on and on about all the stuff that he remembered. And 
you know, I've had that happen a lot, and it just brings home, it's not, he didn't remember the amazing maths lesson or the hands-on science, which would have been amazing and hands-on, but he remembered the relationship and the fun and the care, and that is the privilege of being a teacher, that you get to make those connections with young people and inspire them um, and, just, and just watch them grow, you know, in that year that they're with you, or if you're lucky enough in those, you know, few years that they're with you. Um, speaking of the music, another real highlight of being a teacher is you get to bring your passion and interest into the classroom and share that with your young learners. And so for me, music, literacy, well-being, technology are probably my you know, real passion areas. And so I'm a teacher that shares a lot of that. Um, for anyone that is looking at applying, especially for any primary people here, when we do the interview with you, we want to hear about your passions and your strengths. So come along to the interview ready to share these with us. Um, we, we also just want to really get to know you. Um, we would also love to know that you've been out into a school and you've had some time firstly just checking that teaching is for you. Um, there's nothing worse than coming into this career if you don't like children. Um, so going out into a school, seriously, is go out and check. You know, you might think, hey, I've always wanted to be a teacher. I loved school. I loved you know, my teachers, go and spend some time in a classroom just to double check before you invest in this program and in, in future career. You know, a day in a classroom and you'll get that feeling of, oh yes, this is me. Um, equally in the interview, we will ask you if you've had an opportunity to be out in a school and it's a great thing to be able to talk about as well and make those connections. Um, so yes, you're heading into one of the best jobs around, completely biased as I said. So the master's program um, is pretty unique and this year we've got 40 um, or just under 40 students doing the master's program primary and so you're going to be with these people from as everyone's saying January to December you're going to get to know your um, peers really well we get to know you really well as well we know you by name um, and that's a real bonus of the master's program as well um, as it's been mentioned, you're going to go on placements in primary. You have two main placements, and I've got Logan shortly who will come and have a chat to you about um, what it's like being a master's student. But just to let you know, you'll do one junior placement in primary, and then in a different school in semester two, you'll do a senior or vice versa. You also go out and spend at least eight Wednesdays in the schools in the build-up to each placement. So you get to spend a lot of time in school. It's um, a, you know, an exciting part of your program. Um, the papers, I think, has already been mentioned, but you do a mixture of curriculum, so that is your music, science, drama, dance, maths. Um, so you'll learn a little bit about all the curriculum areas. You'll learn the theory um, and the effective teaching practice, and then the placement, you're putting it all into practice. Another um, question I often get asked around not just the study that you're doing here, um, but also the assignments. And I must say, with the um, curriculum subjects, it is really hands-on. So it's a small group. When we're doing music, you'll be playing instruments. When you're learning about PE, you will be playing games and using equipment. So the learning is a nice mixture of theory and hands-on and a whole lot of fun. Um, but the assignments also are quite varied as well. Coming out of your undergraduate degrees, you may have written a lot of essays or a particular type of assignment. In the master's program, we have a lovely variety of assignments. Some of them are lesson plans, unit plans. Some of them are video recordings, um, you know, a good mixture. And you'll still get the odd essay and things as well. Um, it is a master's level program, and so as has been mentioned, it will be a step up, but there are lots of supports in place, and I think you'll find it really rewarding, um, a good level of challenge as well. So I could go on and on. As I said, I'm incredibly biased about primary teaching and just this whole um, career, but I'd love to hand over to Logan. Now, Logan Russell is in our master's primary program. She's literally given up a night of planning and preparation for her teaching. Um, she's out on placement at the moment, and she may share with you about some of the fun she's had today because it's real life teaching. So thank you, Logan, and welcome. So my name is Logan and as Andrea said, I am a primary master's student. Um, there are so many incredible things that I could say about the College of Education and 
all of the experiences that you'll have, but I think one of the main things that I do want to mention is just that how supportive the staff are. Um, they do mention that they're watching, and they are, as Naomi is doing right now, she is watching. Um, but they are watching in a supportive way where you can go to them if you're feeling upset, you can go to them if you have no clue what's happening, which will happen. Um, but they're also just there if you want to have a yarn about your day. They're really interested, <laughs> which is really helpful. Um, so the support that you will have in this program is incredible. Um, but there is no sugarcoating it. It is hard. It's a lot. Um, there will be moments where you will feel completely overwhelmed. But then counter to that, there will be moments where you feel so much pride for what you're doing and so much excitement. And you find that teaching becomes who you are and your whole personality becomes teaching. Where now I get excited about bugs in the river. I've never been excited about bugs in my life until today. Um, I spent three hours with seven and eight year olds up to my knees in a river looking for bugs and worms that lived under rocks. And I didn't think that was ever going to be me, but it is just something that you can't explain. It is just a feeling that when you are with your students and you look at them and they look back at you with so much wonder because they're like, you have so much knowledge and you're like, do I? <laughs> But to them, you do have a lot of knowledge, and a lot of that does come from the curriculum that you do learn in class. Um, the discussions that you have with your peers are so important. Everyone comes with a different background, everyone comes with different contexts that they understand, and the conversations you have in class really do inform what you do in the classroom, which is really great. Um, You've heard it so much already, but the connections you make with people, they are the most important thing. And it's really important to get to know your peers because these will be the people that will be crying with you after your lesson did not go very well because some kid decided that they weren't listening. Um, but they will also be the people that celebrate with you when everything went completely right and every child passed the assessment that you set for them. And they're looking at you like, oh my God, I understand. Um, and those moments just do make it absolutely incredible and that's when you know that this is the job that you do want to have. Um, if there's any advice I could give is just to take every opportunity, especially the ones that are terrifying, because those tend to be the ones that give you the most. Um, there will be a lot of opportunities and you'll be like, oh, I could go home and nap. Don't go home and nap. Take the opportunity. Um, that and take vitamin C at the start of the year. The germs will find you. You will get sick and tissues will be your best friend. So take the vitamin C. Otherwise, it just, it just take the vitamin C. <laughs> Thank you. Kia ora, Logan. And um, that's um, primary and you don't cry that much, I promise. <laughs> So um, now we're moving on to secondary. I should say that the primary and early childhood you could also do as a three-year Bachelor of Teaching as well. But of course, uh, many of you are here because you're interested in the one year. Um, and before I introduce the next person, I should, should qualify this. I'm actually an experienced secondary school teacher myself. And um, so secondary is a real passion of mine. Maths, obviously. Um, you know, it's the most interesting subject in the world. Um, so everyone's nodding and smiling. That's really good. I'll see you next year. Um, so now I want to introduce you to Ian McGilchrist, who is the secondary program coordinator. Almost feel like a drum roll with that great jacket you just put on. <laughs> Can I, thank you so much, Naomi. Um, can I just say, look, thank you so much to all of you for being so polite and nodding politely at Naomi's uh, love of maths there. <laughs> <laughs> so kia ora koutou. My name's Ian McGilchrist. Um, I'm an English teacher who's now uh, moved up to the College of Education here to um, help contribute to the future teachers of New Zealand. Um, my background has been teaching English here in New Zealand and also overseas, and I've been involved with student teachers as a mentor teacher since 1996. Um, so now it's a real privilege for me to be here, um, working with the, the current generation of student teachers. And I love going out into schools as I'm doing at the moment and seeing 
some of my uh, sort of ment mentee student teachers from years ago now acting as the mentors for the current um, uh, year of, of students coming through. So it's a, it's a real privilege. Um, I think the th one thing that really strikes me about teaching is that it's an enormous responsibility, but hugely rewarding to be able to contribute to the future of young people in our country. It is absolutely rewarding. Um, and I, I was saying just before uh, tonight, uh, about, about six or so weeks ago, I bumped into a former student of mine who's now 40, or 41, it's about 41. Um, and I was his year 10 teacher for social studies. And he remembered me and I barely recognized him. But we launched immediately into a discussion. His first question was, hey, you're Mr. McGilchrist. And I said, yeah, that's right. And he said, I'm, I'm my name. I'll keep him anonymous. And then the next thing he said was, tell us what you think about what's going on in the Ukraine at the moment. And I thought, we launched into it. And I hadn't seen him since he was 16. Um, and so it was just, and, and we talked about school and did some reminiscing. But it was so lovely um, knowing that, gosh, I, I maybe a tiny, tiny part in helping that young person become a fantastic adult the way he is today. Are you doing the slides with your fancy rose gold clicker? Okay, lovely. So, um, with the Master of Teaching Learning is the, the only uh, avenue into secondary teaching that we have here at the university, which is the sort of point of difference between early childhood teaching and primary teaching, so uh, where you do have the Bachelor of Teaching option as well. Um, if you uh, complete the program, you are qualified to teach in a whole range of schools in New Zealand. Um, years 7 to 13, so that's ages um, about, about age 11 up to about age 18. Uh, you're qualified to teach in secondary schools. Uh, they can be uh, private schools, state integrated schools. Uh, they can be area schools, a whole wide range of things. Um, probably to be uh, fair, most of the students in the program uh, end up teaching in the years 9 to 13 uh, bracket, but it's, uh, we still do have a, a good number of teachers who uh, do teach in the year seven and eight. I was out on the road visiting students, watching them teach this week, um, and we have a wonderful teacher at Mackenzie College in Fairley, and she's teaching year seven and eight Chinese, as well as year 13 economics. So it's a good broad range of experiences that you will get. I'll say a little bit about placement, but I'll try not to repeat any of the information that my colleagues have already given you because a lot of what Sonia had said and a lot of what Andrea had said applies all equally to the secondary program. So what they said about uh, the, the different papers and you know, curriculum and sort of contextual papers, professional practice, that all applies for secondary as well. Uh, obviously, the key difference is for your professional experiences, you're placed in secondary schools. Um, and with the secondary program, we have about 75 students in the program. Uh, and that means that not all can be placed in Dunedin. So uh, if you're looking at secondary, you can expect to be placed somewhere else in New Zealand. Um, but we work with you with that. We ask you where you might want to go. Uh, so at the moment, uh, we have got students in Wellington, uh, we've got students in Palmerston North, Invercargill, uh, Fairley, Oamaru, um, all over the place, Central Otago. Okay, so we will work with you to try and place you somewhere that um, you'd also uh, like to go and be. But it's useful for you just to be aware of that. Um, I think that, that's probably not coming. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, um, I suppose my role here is actually just a long-winded introduction to uh, two of our students here who are going to talk to you. I think I did, I'd sort of come forward, come forward, you two. Now, I'm, I'm not going to introduce Jack Gilmore and Molly as stars of the program. They're, you're not stars of the program. You're entire constellations, okay, superstars. So I'm going to pass over to Jack and to Molly, who will be able to tell you more about the program. And I will stick around at the end. If you've got any particular uh, questions that you'd like to ask of me, you know, particularly around things like teaching subjects and what that might mean for your paper selection if you're still studying for your degree, maybe for semester two. Okay, over to you. Sweet. Uh, kia ora koutou. Uh, ko Jack Worm Gilmore toko uh, I'm teaching currently history at King's at the moment. Uh, I'm having the time of my life teaching history at King's. It's really, really fun. A um, little bit about me. Um, I went to Logan Park High School. I had just heaps and heaps of teachers that I found really inspirational and motivational. Um, so when I was in year 13, I kind of decided that I'd be a high school teacher. So um, 
I went to university, I've done my three years, um, and have gone into the teaching program. I tried to do as much as I could at university, like extracurricular subjects, and like a, like a wide range of subjects so I could get like multiple um, teaching areas that I could do, like English and uh, media studies as well. So yeah, that's cool. Um, the program is really, really, really fun. Um, it's the best time I've had in, at university for my four years. Um, it's really great meeting people like Molly. Um, we, get, we get together socially quite a lot, so that's really fun. Um, the teachers, Naomi, Ian, Melissa over there, all fantastic. They're just, you know, you can flick them an email and they'll respond to you in 15 minutes. It's, you know, yeah. And Ian's great. He teaches me and Molly for English and, you know, he's always got some great advice for how we can do things. So, yeah. Um, placement is really, really fun. I have learned so much in these um, five weeks now, is it? Yeah. Yeah. It's so blur, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I have learned more in five weeks about myself and about anything that I did in, you know, three years of university. So that's really, really good. Um, I'm going to be a bit contrarian here and say, although it's a master's course, I, I think the workload's actually pretty manageable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's harder than 300-level university, but, like, it's, it's definitely, like, if you're prepared to put in the work, then, yeah, it's fine. Um, yeah, I would definitely recommend, if you want to be a high school teacher, um, definitely go to a high school beforehand because the teenagers can be a bit frightening. I was, uh, I, my first year nine English class I took, um, it was fifth period um, on a Friday. Um, I went in, they, they didn't stop yelling for the entire period. It was, <laughs> it was like, oh no, I've done everything wrong. But, you know, since then they've come to, to come to know me, I'm really liking it. They like me. It's really, really rewarding when they tell you that you're their favorite teacher. So yeah, it's great. Uh, anyway, I'll pass it on to Molly now. Thank you, Jack. Uh, talo palava, everyone. Uh, ko Molly, toko ikua. Um, yeah, I, I would love to first start um, by agreeing with Jack about the socializing part of the master's program. I've met more awesome people uh, in the last five months than I have in my entire life. And we do, we've got a, a chat on social media called Masters of Socializing, and it literally never stops beeping. And we're just sharing stories about the teaching that we've been doing constantly. And um, I've learned so much from the people in the course. Um, but as well as the amazing um, lecturers that we have here at Otago, I think the first impression that I had was, coming to the masters is like going to school, but it's just only your favorite teacher, <laughs> which is really great because I feel everyone here is, of course, um, a trained teacher, um, but of course, very good teachers because they've gone on to teach teachers. Um, so that's been a really, really awesome part of it. Um, as we're saying, we're on placement at the moment. I'm at Otago Boys. Um, it's been absolutely fantastic. Uh, it's so rewarding to um, work with the students. The first week was really hard. And then I got to know the students, and I feel so invested in their lives and in their future. And um, it's, it's not hard anymore. It's really easy to fill yourself with enthusiasm to go back and keep teaching. So that's really, really awesome. Um, in terms of the workload, I feel similar to Jack, that um, I was expecting it to be more crazy, but I think that it's because the assignments are very practical, um, as well as really creative. Um, one of the assignments we're doing at the moment is to you write a narrative about a situation that happened to you in class, and then, yeah, you do some pretty dense reading about it, and then you um, talk about that at the end. But, you know, a lot of it is really, really creative, and... Um, supportive towards, um, it, it makes sense in, in the reflections that we're doing, it, it is making us um, better teachers. Um, yeah, I think that's all I wanted to share, so I might pass that back to, oh, one more thing. Oh, 
Um, just to sell the uh, the secondary part of it instead of the primary or early childhood part, <laughs> it's it's really great that if you have done a subject at university that you really love. Like I I did history for my three years, and I I love every part of history. So like the other day I I was in my thirteen history class, and some kid we just had about a twenty minute discussion about the history of colonialism in Southeast Asia. And it was like completely off topic, but it's like really cool to be able to like share your knowledge with kids about certain topics and all that sort of stuff. So I'm sure Naomi can say more about maths and teenagers. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. I might just make one more point um, about the application process. So one of the things we were touched to talk about was application process. And I would say the number one most important thing is to consider um, your engagement and your understanding of Te Ao Māori as well as your dedication to Te Tiriti. Um, that comes up a lot in the application process and it's really important to education in New Zealand to be knowledgeable about uh, treaty relationships. Um, I would highly recommend doing Māori 110 and Māori 102 in semester two if you've got any space for them. So that's um, conversational Māori as well as um, Māori society. And um, the, you can get by without them, but I've found doing those papers has been so applicable to everything that we've done in the course so far. So yeah, awesome. Ian. Thank you so much. Right, so uh, we'll talk a little bit about, and I'll come closer because um, with masks and glasses, things are out of focus if, uh, if I stand too far back. You're right there, I'll, you're yep. right, you're okay? I, I'm, I'm, all, yeah. I'm all right, yeah, okay. I've got my Zimmer frame, I'll okay. be fine. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll say a little bit about the curriculum um, <laughs> subjects because one of the key things to consider for secondary is what subjects will you, will you teach at, um, at secondary school? Um, we do recommend that you have three teaching subjects in mind. And you do need to have met prerequisites for each of those subjects. Um, and they are listed in this brochure here. And I can see some of you have that. Um, and if you do wish to talk about your particular case, I'll happily have, have a quick conversation with you um, after this. But it is very important that you do have those prerequisites to be um, allowed entry into the uh, program. The one thing I would like to explain is that um, uh, you'll see there are columns there that say are a required co-requisite and a recommended co-requisite. That's a very strong recommendation. So one example of that uh, would be if you wish to teach English as a learning area that you also do specialist English. And that will give you enough experience um, and some skills to teach right through from year nine right through to year 13 in that particular subject area. But do have a close look at that. Um, I will also clarify, it's there on the slide, what was meant by a body of papers. I get asked that question a lot. A body is a collection, so at least one paper um, at 100 level, at least one paper at 200 and one at 300. That's really what that means. Um, and finally, we'll just clarify a, a little points about terminology. Um, we talk about learning areas, and the reason for that is because that's what it says in the New Zealand curriculum. Okay, there are seven learning areas, and they're sort of very broad, if you like. One is English, learning languages, science, social sciences, technology, physical education, and health. And what's the other one? Have I got them all? Maths. And mathematics and statistics. <laughs> Thank you. It's because we are and the founders. Apologies. We are the founders where everything else is based. So um, we do re uh, recommend that you go uh, across maximum of two learning areas um, and you can see with the examples there how it might be possible to structure your three teaching subjects with that but um, it's probably more important that you think about your own particular situation and come and have a chat if you've got any concerns okay thank you very much and for those people on the live stream that might sound really complicated but if you go onto the website it runs you through that um, well, so when they talk about three teaching subjects, it's not three different teaching subjects like IT and computers and English. That could be within the same learning area. Okay, so um, Melissa Bell is our academic manager, and um, she it's a really important role in the university, and she's going to... She says it's a bit of a dry topic that I've given her, um, but she carries it well. 
Thank you, Naomi. Um, kia ora, talupa lava. Um, my name's Melissa Bell. Um, and I just want to say that the others may say they're passionate educators, but I'm so passionate I managed to be born to two parents who are educators. I married a teacher, and my firstborn child is doing the masters at this point. In fact, my mum is one of 11, and eight of them are teachers. You should see our Christmases, they're wild. Right, um, this is, this is uh, we've, we've had the nice information, so we're feeling inspired. Now we've got to get your applications in. So there's going to be quite a few wee nuggets and hints here. Um, you've already had a few about preparing for the interview. So this is a restricted program. And um, we do limit numbers because, um, as you've heard from students, we really believe that um, the pastoral care we give our students is essential to the program. So the numbers are limited. They close, the program applications close on the 31st of July. Now, we could potentially consider a late application after that date, but there is no guarantee. So uh, my curriculum area is history, and we get a lot of history applicants. Um, if you want to be considered, um, get your application in early. There are some subject areas that we will still seek because they're harder to staff. So there are more roles, and we, we really need to um, um, train more teachers in those areas. So please, please get it in early. We try and turn this around really quickly too. So when I say getting your application in, that means your full application. So um, choose your referees carefully and harass them and make sure it, it, they come in because um, last year we had about three master's students who were the first to apply and their referee reports just didn't come and we cannot interview you until we've got those in. Um, everyone is interviewed for this program so we will contact, probably me will contact you and call you in for an interview and can you please prioritise that? So, you know, last year we had people who said, oh, I've got a babysitting job that day. If you can kind of clear those commitments, it would be great. Um, we put together a panel and so you will always be interviewed by two people. One of them will be one of us, but the other person's likely to be a school principal or someone from an early childhood setting, someone from a school. They've taken time off to interview you. It's really embarrassing too when you don't turn up. So um, we do mass interviewing for primary and secondary on a Saturday. And it's quite cool because you come in, um, you come into the college staff room um, and we'll call you for interviews, but you kind of get to meet a lot of the other people. Can you remember doing that? Was that cool? Yeah. We thought that was cool. Um, the sad news is that we have a requirement to test you on that day also. So you will be sitting a literacy test and a numeracy test. What we normally do is if your um, interviews in the morning, we'll put those tests on in the afternoon. Um, if you do not pass them, there's a chance to resit them. Um, even if you have a PhD in English, we have to give you this English test, which is probably around year eight, nine level English. It's a little bit embarrassing, but um, it's just something we've got to do. Um, please know if you want to take a place. It's great if you can turn that around. If you don't want to take a place, let us know because we'd love to give it to the next person on the list. What do we look for? We, we look kind of for a, a real balance of things. First of all, we want um, someone who has a, a good academic profile. So you normally need a B grade average for your subject major as a minimum. And there may be some room for discretion around that, but, but that's um, what we're really looking at um, for your application. Um, we want to, to see that you've done something that connects you to working with young people. So that might be um, tutoring. It could be that you've coached a sports team, that you're involved in church groups um, or youth groups of some kind. Um, we also look for a suitability to be a children's worker. We have a very unusual question we have to ask at the end, which is just a safety one about your suitability um, for working with young people. Um, and we also look at your secondary subjects. If you're a secondary person, we're going to ask you in your interview about your ability to go out of town for a placement, and we'll probably um, ask you where you might be um, willing to go. 
But, you know, teachers um, need more than, you know, just a good academic background. They need sparkly personalities. They need to be able to connect with people and they need to be able to engage with a really diverse range of people. They need to be good communicators. Um, and I always say, we can help you learn to teach, but we can't teach you to be charismatic. So, you know, don't, I know it's hard in an interview because it's so awkward and formal, but we really want to let um, your personality through. So as much as possible, just try and relax um, into the interview. Um, some people find it really hard to talk about themselves um, positively because we're quite humble as Kiwis. Um, but this is your time to put that aside and really be proud of the things that you would bring um, to this profession. Um, you had some excellent advice from Molly about Māori 110 um, and 102, was it? Yep. Um, I also, for those of you who are looking at primary, can I do a real plug? If you have got a little bit of space in semester two, please consider a New Zealand history paper. We have a very exciting new Aotearoa Histories curriculum, which is coming into schools from next year onwards, and schools will be looking to graduates to really lead some of this. Um, this is my area and I'm doing work with primary schools and many are very nervous about it. So it's another thing that would really um, strengthen your application. Try and get into a school or an early childhood setting for a visit if you can. If you manage that, we're gonna ask you lots um, about that experience and what you noticed in the interview. Um, the other thing I would say is um, keep an eye on eVision. All the alerts go through eVision. So if you are new to Otago, just um, either sync the mailboxes so it's coming through, but please check on that and um, just be ready for some communication through that source. Um, there are